So hi, Micro Hunter here. Well, I do receive a lot of questions uh, and sometimes also comments uh, from my viewers who want to know how can I grow bacteria like you see here in the background? How can you grow bacteria at home so that I can look at them under the microscope? And usually I'm not quite happy when I receive uh, questions like this because growing bacteria at home is generally something that you probably should not be doing, especially if you don't know which bacteria you're growing. For example, if you spoil some food or if you make a nutrient broth and then you let it bacteria grow in there you don't really know which bacteria you're growing and maybe some of them are actually prob problematic also for your health so generally I don't recommend it but today I'm going to show you a very safe source of bacteria not only safe I would even say pro possibly even healthy source because I'm going to show you now how you can take a pure culture of yogurt bacteria well actually it's not that pure as a matter of fact there are three different bacterial species in the culture and uh, if you buy it um, from a shop uh, then you usually get it in a sachet or in a little uh, glass bottle like this and then the bacteria are freeze dried and this means that the company has frozen the bacteria and then applied a vacuum and this conserves them um, but they're inactive until you put it into a liquid uh, solution and this is what I've done right now I've taken a very small um, amount of the dry bacteria and it dissolved it in a little bit of water I discovered that the amount was not enough so I had to add a little bit more later on and I used the pipette uh, to resuspend the bacteria and then I waited a few minutes until the bacteria have taken up the water and then I put it directly under the microscope. Uh, I am adding here again a little bit more because it was not concentrated enough but this is uh, indeed a method that I recommend that you do because the bacterial concentration is quite high. You only see bacteria, you do not see any other cellular material that might distract um, and uh, as a matter of fact you also able to see different bacterial shapes this way. Now um, I've been using phase contrast uh, now but I'm also going to show you some other techniques. Most of you probably don't have a phase contrast microscope but it's also possible to see them in bright field but the contrast is a little bit lower. Now here I'm really zooming in a lot I'm with uh, my video editing software and you can also see already the different shapes um, of the bacteria um, and you see it's kind of blurry already because I'm way beyond the res resolution limit um, of the video system and also of course of the microscope. This here is in a differential interference contrast or DIC. Here it looks a little bit like the light is coming from one side so it looks a little bit three-dimensional uh, but you can also see the bacteria quite well. Um, they're moving around now I think that in many cases they're move moving also because of so-called Brownian motion that they're not moving on their own but they're moving because of the thermal activity that's going on and uh, the molecules bumping into the bacteria actually cause them to shake um, and this does not mean that they're actually moving on their own but some of them actually might. Yeah this here is a sprite field so this is what you're probably going to see uh, with a yeah, your microscope provided that you have a condenser attached. You really have to close the condenser a lot uh, otherwise the contrast is going to be a little bit too low. Bacteria are actually as a matter of fact one of the more uh, difficult species uh, to observe not only because they're so small uh, but also because they lack contrast and I can recommend that if you want to take a bacterial sample under the microscope uh, then only use a very very small amount of, of the liquid. Liquid. Of course I want to make some yogurt as well so it's a little bit like uh, I'm doing some cooking here right now. I heated up the milk, I boiled it and then I let it cool down. That's really important because you do not want to add those bacteria to hot uh, yogurt, uh, hot milk that is because otherwise you're going to kill them off. And yeah I'm just going to show you some more of the original um, yeah, bacteria that found in powder form uh, that I suspended in some water. And the clumps that you see is because some of the bacteria have not been fully resuspended yet. Um, so it takes a little bit of time here as well. I'm just going to show this to you while we're waiting for the hot milk to cool down um, a little bit. The optimum temperature is around uh, 41, 42 degrees uh, centigrade, which is I think around 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Here again, we're in bright field, still waiting for the milk to cool down. Um, and then um, I resuspended a, a knife tip uh, of uh, the freeze dried yogurt, yogurt culture. Now, now what you can do also of course is you can take some freshly made yogurt and then add that uh, to warm milk it also of course works um, that's the no normal way to do that uh, but uh, of course if you want to have a very highly concentrated uh, 
yogurt bacteria under the microscope, you actually want to look at the powder. Yeah, so that's now the milk has now cooled down appropriately. I'm adding a little bit of the um, freeze dried bacterial culture here, um, and then I'm mixing it in uh, quite well. And then uh, we have exponential growth happening. And exponential growth, uh, it's 140 degrees Fahrenheit and not 106, as I said. Exponential growth means that now every, I don't know, maybe about every half an hour, the bacteria are going to double. And maybe after a few hours, you're going to see that uh, there has been a li clear liquid on the top and it's now solid enough that you're even able to cut it with a knife. And this way, by cutting it, you also allow some more of the liquid to escape. I personally like yogurt to be um, more solid. Well, of course, this is not a cooking show, but a microscopy show. So of course, I'm going to not only eat the yogurt, but also put it under the microscope uh, to actually now see a little comparison here how the bacteria that uh, come from the yogurt um, actually look under the microscope compared to the ones um, in the freeze-dried uh, sample. It's pretty simple rather. You just take again a little bit of yogurt and you compress it between the cover glass and the microscope slide and when you put it under the microscope yeah of course you see our little friends again the bacteria and something quite interesting now I did actually see some of them moving around. I'm gonna just show you in a second um, and these are so-called rods um, that these are the long bacteria which are elongated and here we have one here we have one that's moving around. As a matter of fact it looks almost like there are two of them maybe it's in the process of division but it's it's clearly visible that this is not just a random movement, that this one is already directed and uh, you already have uh, a clear uh, movement here that I was able to see. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much all that I wanted to uh, show you today. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye bye.